This video is brought to you by Status Audio. They were kind enough to send me a pair of Between Pro earbuds. I happen to spend most of my day, at least it feels like, listening to music, podcasts, watching YouTube or Netflix, or editing my own content for my channel. So I love the opportunity to try something new. What's impressive about these headphones is that they come with the latest Bluetooth technology and triple drivers, something a lot of earphones on the market don't offer. What it basically means is that the bass, treble, and mids all have their own driver, resulting in better sound quality. Whenever I'd walk around the house listening to these headphones or just sitting at my desk, the sound was so inviting and it almost felt like I was sitting in front of a home theater system. The headphones come with 12 hours of battery life plus 36 hours in the case, giving you a total of 48 hours of continuous playback. Use the promo code ROCK AND ROLL and the link below to get 10% off the earphones. I want to thank Status Audio for sponsoring this video and let's get to today's topic. Nirvana would rise to prominence in the early 90s due to the astronomical success of their second album, 1991's Nevermind. Two years later though, amongst all the band's success and internal tensions that came along with it, drummer Dave Grohl briefly quit the band. That's what we're going to discuss in today's video. In the biography This Is A Called Life and Times of Dave Grohl, author Paul Brannigan would reveal the tensions in Nirvana's camp came to a head in 1993. Brannigan would claim in his book that by this point in time there were two camps, the rhythm section which consisted of Dave Grohl and Chris Novoselic, and Cobain and his wife Courtney Love. In other interviews Grohl talked about the camp saying there was one group who did drugs and those who didn't, and he was a member of the group that didn't do drugs. Grohl would tell Vulture years after the book came out that the band was on a plane ride between Seattle and Los Angeles to start work on production on their In Utero tour. Grohl at the time was sitting a few rows ahead of his bandmates Chris Novoselic and Kurt Cobain when he overheard the two talking. Grohl would tell author Paul Brannigan, Kurt was kind of effed up and I heard him talking about how shitty of a drummer I was. In a separate interview, Grohl would tell Vulture, I could hear Kurt saying, I think we need a drummer that's more rudimental, along the lines of Dan Peters, who was the guy they almost hired. I was really upset because I thought things were okay. Peters, for his part, had already played in Nirvana prior to Grohl joining. There's also been two differing versions of what happened next. According to Brannigan's book, which involved interviews with Grohl, he would claim that as the plane touched down, the drummer was upset telling Nirvana's tour manager Alex McLeod that he was quitting the band and was quoted as saying, I just want to F and play music. I don't want to deal with any of this craziness. Fortunately for the band, Grohl's exit would be short-lived after McLeod convinced him to stay in the group. The book's author reclaimed that Grohl briefly quitting the band likely never reached Kurt, with the author writing, and I quote, In the cold light of day, Dave decided that everyone has to eat a little shit at work sometimes. However, years later, Grohl would tell Vulture a slightly different version of events, saying, I talked to Chris and I said, is this really what you guys want to do? Because if that's what you want, maybe just let me know and we can call it a day. I eventually talked to Kurt about it and he said, no, that's not what we want to do. I just felt like it's up to you guys what kind of drummer you really want and they decided I should stay. Brannigan would conclude in his book that if Cobain was still alive today, that Nirvana would likely still be around, but Grohl wouldn't be a part of it, stating, and I quote, Dave was very aware that Nirvana was Kurt and Chris' band, and as lifelong friends, they shared a bond which went beyond music. At some point, I feel Dave would have parted company with the pair. 